What's up guys, welcome back to the show, back to another video. In today's video, I am back with my boy Arlon, and uh, honestly, I'm also back with this guy. I don't even know who he is and what he's doing here, but uh, where, where, where did Chipotle bowl go, bro? Did you just eat the whole bowl? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, the bowl's right over here. Dang, bro, you look that clean. Anywho, um, I don't know where, he just came out of nowhere, he's just eating our food, drinking our water, but he's chilling, he's chilling, you know? Um, anywho, today's goal is to try to get this, <laughs> today's goal is to try to get this 640i running and driving. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that today just because the dog is chilling with us. But the goal is obviously get the thing running and driving, zero lights on the dash, get the whole front end fully assembled, everything on the car completely, and hope to God the engine and transmission is all solid. The transmission was tuned, the engine was tuned, it did have countless downpipes, did have pierced these turbos. So now that everything's back to stock, I'm really hoping everything's going to be great in the Navy. So without further ado, nor stop talking, we got this. The whole front end back together is looking so 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 good everything's buttoned up exactly the way it needs to be i mean it's a clean title so uh everything just honestly bolted in no problems all the gaps are absolutely perfect we got all the fender liners and everything back in the car literally there's nothing left from this car outside the car other than that belly pan right over there so at this point we do have coolant we do have oil um we just need to actually put in some transmission fluids just top it off honestly we didn't really drain it much but it did come out a little bit out of the like that clutch plate, whatever it's called. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and top off that fluid. I need to turn on the car, run it through the gears, and uh, my boy Alon's gonna go ahead and fill up the fluids. So I just cleared the codes. The car is currently in limp mode. It's not going fast to whatsoever. I can't even accelerate really. It has DSC malfunction. I'm gonna just stay in the middle lane real quick. Um, it is going. I mean, we are driving. Engine isn't knocking or anything like that, but I'm afraid maybe something's wrong even with the transmission because I cannot accelerate for like it's something like some kind of limp mode. Maybe it just needs to break in kind of like the Supra. Because right here, where I took this turn right over here, the Supra kind of just like unlocked itself. So it's kind of weird. Just gonna keep driving. Maybe we'll get lucky and it just fixes itself. But I guess we'll see. All right, guys. So the car is kind of like roughly idling. I don't know why. Uh, there is a code saying the throttle valve one and two. There's like there's like no connection to it. So maybe we forgot to disconnect. That's the thing, when replacing an engine, you never really know. It could be disconnected. Could be, we were connecting so many things at once. And uh, I mean, there is gonna be some issues, especially when put in a motor, so it's nothing to be stressed out about. Um, thankfully, the car does run and there's no like crazy smoke or it's not like roughly idling like crazy, um, but we do have a lot of faults we need to figure out. So hopefully we find something disconnected. Oh, was that disconnected, bro? No, I just took that off. Oh, you just took that off? Okay, what was- see this wire right down here. Ah, okay. Is it a throttle body wiring? So that is disconnected, guys. All right, guys. So good news. I did take it out for a second drive after clearing the codes and plugging in the, th the throttle body. We have zero lights over here, which is a great big sign. Uh, everything's idling out pretty good over here. There is a small little weird noise coming from this side of the car when we are driving down the block. So I just need to figure out what that is exactly. And then honestly, guys, I think we have a perfectly running 640i, which is insane, bro. First off, dude, shout out to you. I really appreciate you. And guys, hopefully if you figure this out, I want to take this thing for a wash detail. You guys will see it in its ultimate 
ultimate best form. But as for now, still need to figure that out. We do have some weird suspension that's like, it, it has like aftermarket, I believe it's like H, H and R lowering springs. Oh, I mean, those are pretty good lowering springs, but not to be put on a luxury car. So I don't know if that could be the clunking noise. Um, I guess I'll pop the hood, check underneath and just see if there's anything that just looks loose because it's pretty bad. Like it's, it's pretty bad. All right guys, so first drive, zero lights on the dash. Everything's looking really good. Actually, the only light on the dash is the windshield washer fluid. So we're gonna head down, try to get some AC recharge and some washer fluids. And this thing should be 100% ready to go. We have some BMW coolant, BMW gaskets, and BM, uh, well, not BMW oil, but BMW transmission fluids. Literally, we pretty much resurface this thing basically at BMW using all BMW stuff um, and I proper paperwork and all that stuff. I love paperwork. It makes me feel awesome with that stuff. But yeah, so far, I cannot believe I'm driving this car. A car that we picked up that never ran is officially running and driving, and it's running really, really, really well. Um, again, zero lights on the dash, thank the Lord. The only driving of this car is a slight weird noise coming from the, 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 the front side, the front left. Don't know why exactly, but uh, we will pull up. We will, we will pull over in a little bit to make sure everything's gravy in the Navy. But as of right now, everything's looking pretty good. Hopefully, you know that that clunking sound is something that maybe we left the tool there, or I mean, I looked. I, I looked. I, I checked the wheel if it's tight. I checked the the front strut if it's on there. It's tight, and everything seems to be gravy in the Navy. So uh, I'm heading to where my boy Erlan lives. We're gonna go ahead and try to get uh, this thing freshly washed and then freshly uh, detailed the engine bay and everything, so we can get this thing looking like it just came out of a dealership. I mean, it literally feels in terms of like oil and in terms of maintenance, it's pretty much been fully serviced. Uh, so obviously getting it washed and that detail, it's gonna look really, really, really good. And especially, I mean, guys, this, this car is already, I just, oh man, it feels so nice to have gotten a car this far. Usually I rebuild cars that are like more of like body damage and stuff like that. It's more of my expertise. I'm still learning the whole like mechanical sense of like when you pull apart a whole engine, where all the wires go, how to make sure you route everything properly. That takes a lot of like honestly skill. Um, it will take me some time to get used to it, but as of right now, thankfully I got my boy Arlan helping me and teaching me all the little things about mechanic. Without further ado, I'll see you guys once we're at the car wash. We need to get this thing cleaned up. Drives good. <laughs> God bless. Man. Sheesh. <laughs> that sounds good. I'm not gonna lie. All right, guys, pull up a Walmart right now. We just need to. Uh, <laughs> we just need to get that AC.
And guys, we are officially back home and the 640i is just chilling like a villain. So some things that happened off camera. Yo man, I ended up taking it to the smog shop, same exact day. Was a risky move, not gonna lie, but the day that it pretty much started running, I drove it around about 50, 60 miles, and then right after that, I went straight to smog to get this thing smogged, and guess what? Our 640i that was once not running, the car that we bought had a blown engine. First car I've ever bought with a blown engine, and we got it done in this garage. I mean, special, special, special thanks to my boy, Alon. It is important to surround yourself with like-minded people and also people that will help you elevate in life. And in this case, we finally taught ourselves a new skill. I mean, yeah, I didn't do this engine swap on my own, but I did learn a lot throughout the process. And hopefully in the next one, something I'm gonna be tackling a little bit more myself. But I am just so, so, so happy, guys, that this car is just running and driving. It's been absolutely amazing. So not only did it pass smog, which was amazing, guys, it was such a surreal feeling that a car that we put together passed smog, which is, I mean, California smog inspections are just insanely hard to pass, unless your car is like a, you know, a dealer car and you never had any issues. But I mean, a car that we literally just had the motor outside of it the day before, it passed smog. So anyways, I'm very happy about it. While I was doing the test drive of it, I found out that one of the wheels were kind of like shaking. I didn't know why, but it, it felt like some kind of vibration coming from the front front driver's side uh, wheel. And I didn't know what that was exactly. I took off the wheel, I checked the suspension, I checked the strut, everything looked pretty much tight. So I didn't get it whatsoever. So I took it down to my local tire shop and I had them just do their free inspection. They offer a free wheel inspection or a free suspension inspection. And thankfully they found out exactly what it was, which was a loose sway bar. Yes, I just remember now that we loosened up the sway bar to get things out of the way. And uh, yeah, unfortunately we forgot to tighten it up. Thank the Lord, it was just loose. It wasn't completely out. All he did is pretty much tighten up the two bolts for the sway bar end link and bada bing bada bang no more sounds this car drives absolutely amazing now the only issue that we have is this tire right over here i don't know if you guys can see let me go and see if i can press on it i mean i can literally put my whole hand through it and i don't know if you guys can see right now it just got pushed down even more but basically there is no air in this tire if i hook up the psi right now this thing will show zero psi and i'll throw up an image of how this tire looks unfortunately guys this is like an almost brand new tire but because of the puncture location this tire is pretty much junk so we have an exact tire on order it's coming in soon and that will help us knock out our last light on this dashboard the only light we have on this dashboard right now is the tpms light and that's going to help fix that and by fixing the tire which is one of our cosmetic issues is going to help us fix one of our mechanical issues on the dashboard and it's going to look like a perfect dash perfect car guys this thing is absolutely immaculate Seventy-eight thousand miles 640i clean title looks super good we have two keys to the car and actually the title just got delivered now too so this is one of those perfect builds um, that's just been like God bless throughout the entire situation. A lot of bills don't go according to plan like the super. It's been heavily delayed. And uh, I mean, I, I don't even know what to say, honestly, guys, with the whole super situation. All I'm saying is, is that we finally have a date that's booked, which is June 24th. So the June, no, June 25th. So June 25th is the day that we booked to get this quarter panel replaced and repaired. And it's all gonna be on video. This is why it's been taking me so, so, so long to do all my major repairs for quarter panel jobs and stuff like that. I usually just take it to my body guy and we have him just cut, replace Bondo, do all the stuff he needs to do. But this time I actually have somebody, a collaboration that we're about to do on this channel that's gonna help us put that quarter panel on that. And the entire walkthrough is gonna be on video, which is gonna be super, super, super sick. If you guys are excited to see us literally fix this here in this garage, make sure to smash that like button. Without further ado, that is gonna have to conclude this video. I do have a lot of modifications I wanna start doing to the 328. I have a final video of modifications I wanna do to this guy right here. And then also the X5, we have so many modifications we picked off of our parts car X5 that I wanna put onto that car. And then obviously our E91, um, the donor car is coming soon. Again, I keep saying coming soon, coming soon, coming soon, mainly because I really didn't wanna buy an E91 M3 and uh, have another car sit outside my yard. As you guys can see, I've, literally my whole driveway is full of cars right now. I mean, God bless. I mean, it's amazing. I have one car right now in the backyard. And at the same time, we're actually getting some work done to our backyard, um, which will allow us to be able to work back there. Because honestly, doing an engine swap in this garage was no fun. Like it honestly really sucked. There's not enough space from front and behind. And uh, I think if we were able to do it in our side yard, it's gonna be so much better. Plus, if it gets a little messy back there, you know, you just spray it down with the hose. In this garage, you have so many things on the side of it that once you spray down water, it gets underneath everything and it just gets really bad and nasty. And I don't wanna go through that again. So the project already started started for some concrete to be put in the backyard. It's already pretty much halfway through. Um, if you guys want me to show you that in the next video, make sure to smash the like button and let me know down below. But without further ado, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay home. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.